The United States and allies are providing all possible assistance to Ukraine not only because of Russian aggression, but also because of Kremlin attempts to impose a new world order. This was announced in the White House. This is more than just Russia's brutal, unjustified war uh, on Ukraine uh, is more than just a land grab, although uh, heinous as, as that is and has become. It's, it's about a nuclear saber-rattling permanent member of the UN Security Council um, uh, seeking to undermine the UN Charter principles of territorial integrity and sovereignty and seeking to impose uh, a new world order of might makes right. After the beginning of a full-scale war, China did not support any of the steps to isolate Russia in the international arena, did not recognize the decision of the International Criminal Court on warrant for Putin's arrest. The West is concerned that Xi Jinping may supply little weapons to Russia, analysts emphasize. Both countries are undermining the rules-based international order that the United States and many of our allies and partners have built since the end of World War II. Putin and Xi Jinping would like to rewrite the rules of the game in the world. In this regard, Moscow and Beijing are strengthening their cooperation and relations. John Kirby, coordinator for strategic communications at the U.S. National Security Council, in an interview with Fox News. This is not only about military support, but also about economic, energy and humanitarian. Thus, since the beginning of a full-scale war, the United States alone has provided Ukraine with about $113 billion, the White House reported. In addition to the U.S. State Department and the Pentagon, other ministries are involved in helping Ukraine, in particular agriculture, energy. Uh, the United States has committed to providing strong economic and energy support uh, uh, to Ukraine. That's roughly $20 billion uh, uh, there to literally be able to keep the lights on uh, in Ukraine and to be able to help Ukraine uh, build back even better. Both the UK Department of Defense and the White House have said that Russia's campaign to destroy Ukraine's energy industry has failed. The Ukrainian energy grid today is about 40 percent degraded. So we need to work together um, to provide Ukraine with the resources it needs to restore that capacity, but also to build the, the greener, more sustainable, more decentralized energy grid that, that your government, that the Ukrainian government has uh, committed to establishing. I think Prime Minister Shmihal's visit to Washington this week is an important opportunity to continue that work together. What we're doing through the G7 group is also an element of this. Now the priority of the US and allies is to strengthen the Ukrainian army and keep Russia from another invasion of Ukraine in the future. We recognize uh, that our commitment uh, to Ukraine is a long-term commitment, not only something we recognize, but we very much welcome and embrace uh, because of the role that Ukraine will play in European security over the long term. Mm -hmm. Let's just think about this for a moment. I mean. Ukraine will have, probably outside of Turkey, the largest, most modernized, most advanced armed forces in Europe, right? Uh, and we want to ensure that the interoperability of Ukraine uh, um, uh, with, um, uh, with allies and, and then partners is strong. We want to make sure that we're all and will remain on, on the same page. Washington is working on all scenarios of possible aggressive actions of Moscow in the future. It is not only about Ukraine. Therefore, the United States will continue to strengthen cooperation with allies in Europe and with partners in Latin America, East Asia and Africa, says Derek Hogan. Reported by Salhi Kulas, Christina Dombrovska, UATV News.